No end of life conversation is complete without the subject of embalming. Embalming hit the mainstream with the assassination of Abraham Lincoln when a country in mourning needed time to travel to pay their respects to him. During the American Civil War, families paid embalmers to prepare the remains of their sons so that they could be sent home for a proper burial. Embalming is the chemical treatment of the remains to restore the appearance of the deceased and to slow down the natural breakdown of the tissues. The first tissue that starts to break down after death is the blood cells, and so the blood is removed from the body. From there, the embalmer decides on what chemical composition to use that will ensure the best appearance of the remains. In very few instances are you legally required to be embalmed, mainly when the remains are traveling by air or out of the country. There are very good reasons when the funeral home will feel that embalming is in the family's best interest. It's not uncommon today that a funeral takes place one to two weeks after the person has passed away. And that's a lot of time that nature can take her course. Not if the cremation happens directly without a service, but if there is a funeral beforehand, a lot of the time people are embalmed. Picture this, you're going to have a funeral with cremation to follow, so it's more cost effective to use a rental casket rather than purchasing one. The funeral home requires for sanitary purposes that the remains are embalmed before using the rental casket. Following the funeral service, the remains are removed from the casket and sent to the crematorium. We don't know how many people are cremated after embalming, but through our own research, we calculate approximately 500 per year just here in Metro Vancouver. What is that doing for the environment? At Heritage Gardens, we promote a greener way to go. Talk to us today about your options. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.